One special, episode one for the week, Tuesday. Uh, let's see here. I've got, oh, I've got a whole bunch of stuff that, that, that I've been, um, but you know, last week I, I, I'll, I'll start with this. Like, I'm telling you what I'm going to get into. I think I'm going to talk about dreamers and immigration tomorrow. Um, but, uh, I'm going to finish up where I was on the, the Taiwan special last week. I was talking about China and Trump and my thoughts about, uh, that look, China was always going to renege. China was always going to try to change the deal. There's a professor that I'm, I'm mildly know as a, as an acquaintance over here in Taiwan. And he was putting together uh, as a leadership training package for his MBA program that he teaches. And he explains, he explains, you know, difference between far Eastern and Western culture. And one of the things he talks about power distance, he, you know, draws a whole bunch of people there. And then he has like, a, you know, the boss in the West is a little bit taller than everybody else. And then, you know, but then in East Asia, power distance, you know, there's a whole bunch of little pictures of people and there's this great big giant boss and they want a boss that's ultra powerful and dramatic and theatrical and loves himself too much and all that. Um, well, see, the professor tries to put it in a way that's polite, but I think I'm going to get into that. Uh, the other thing, one of the other things he explains, he explains a lot of different things. One of the other things he explains is he says, in the West, they negotiate first and sign the contract after. In the Far East, Chinese culture, they sign the contract first and then negotiate after. Uh, that is probably the most polite way I could think of explaining someone who's a chronic pathological liar. Uh, but that is one way of understanding it. You sign the contract first and then negotiate after. That means I get you locked in blank check to whatever the flip I'm going to throw at you. And then after I surprise you and you can't do anything about it. That's how they work in that culture. And that's why China is trying to do that with the U.S. president. It, it's, I mean, the Americans got to be wondering, what are these guys thinking? This is how they do everything, man. Yeah. Well, my point in all this is Trump knows it. Trump absolutely knew they were going to do that. And they knew that was going on for a long time. Trump didn't suddenly, you know, come out and... Uh, say they're not, they're not following the rules. They knew about this. And if they, and as much as they didn't, they knew that it was going to happen. Trump is not, we're not looking at, at trade wars deteriorating and falling apart. And then this leading to war. No, that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at a, at a repeat at a three peat of Japan uh, the, the World War II, leading up to Japan, I mean, the U.S. knew Japan was up to no good, but we provoked them. We did lots of things to provoke Pearl Harbor. It's not just this rumor that, that the British government knew it was going to happen and try to tell us and we didn't listen. FDR didn't listen to Winston anyway. Um, the U.S. was very busy provoking Japan for a long time with trade wars and stuff. I don't know the details. I don't even know if it included blockades, but I think it did. I think oil supply might have had something to do with it. It's hard for Japan to take over the world if they have no oil to get their boats to move around. Um, but there was a lot of provocation leading up to Japan attacking Pearl Harbor, and a lot of that provocation had to do with trade. So what's going on here is right out of the classic playbook. This, we are not seeing trade negotiations go bad. We're seeing Trump show the world what happens when you try to do business with China. Trump is showing the world how the Chinese actually behave. I don't think Trump is just pretending to have a trade war with China to irritate China, to make to provoke them to justify a war. I think Trump is putting on display what the Chinese do because I, you know, I, I, again, you know, what, what is it that's going on with, with, with China? Why is China so evil and bad? Uh, sorry to tell you this, but if you're a regular Walmart shopper, you're one of the ones that made China this bad because 
that whole move our jobs overseas and move stuff to China was all part of that culture of I'm going to drive uh, 50 cents in gas across town to save five cents on an item. Um, that coupon clipping culture is what drove people to buy stuff from the cheaper brand and that was made in China. So if you're not happy with what China's doing and you were a regular Walmart shopper or, or you know, a, a, an, I, I want the cheaper one type of shopper. Um, yeah, uh, it was more expensive. It's just that the difference in price was delayed. Everything has a cost, including saving five cents on an item. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to, be, to blame people. I've been saying that for years. China was becoming a monster and, and it, was, it was all from the American consumer wanting to spend uh, so much less money on stuff. All right. Well, en enough uh, blame and, and see, I told you so, because the, 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 I, I, don't wanna, I don't like it when people give me the see, you told me so speech because yeah, I'm like, well, I'm, I live in the world of yesterday. So I'm, I'm not mad about it. I'm, I'm, really, I'm really not mad. I'm just trying to explain history. You know, we don't, we don't like a big China to do stuff like this. Then, then you can't be a regular Walmart shopper. You, you, you know, at least not Walmart as we know it today. Walmart's theme was was lower prices, lower prices, lower prices, and it. I, I don't think it was an economic philosophy. I don't think it was about fiscal responsibility in the home. Walmart's lower prices, lower prices stuff. I think it was a chemical addiction. I, 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 a friend of mine once said that that that, that the sign, you know, the, the the little sunburst, and then there it says sale exclamation point. That 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 thing is clinically proven to make a woman's blood pressure rise. You know, um, uh, I don't think people were were spending money on on spending less money on stuff because they thought that it was fiscally responsible at home. I think they were doing it because they were chemically addicted to the rush of thinking that they're saving something. It was consumerism. And yeah, so consumerism created China. Let's just, and ironically, they're communist. So what's that say about the free market? Um, look, free market is great as long as you don't let your chemical addiction to consumerism and, and, and the, the, the myth of saving. You're not saving, you're spending. You know, I, I, that was Clintonomics. You know, we could we could increase spending by six hundred million dollars, but we'll increase it by only three hundred million dollars, and we'll call that a cut. Yeah, whatever. Uh, you know, th that was the joke Clintonomics during the nineties. Um, China, uh, of course, China was always going to renege. Trump knew that, and Trump's been. Uh, I think he's been negotiating with them because he needed time to, to get our degraded, deteriorated military back up to snuff from the <clears throat> uh, near decade before him of it being left in disrepair and all that. Oh, we can't do anything. We can't. Uh, we're not going to save anything. Uh, it's over. And uh, we might as well just lay down and die because uh, our time is past. And uh, that's the end. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, no, it wasn't the end. It was an attempt to give people a tranquilizer while we, well, we commit, uh, euthanasia, it, politically anyway. So, um, Trump's known about the problem. He knew this was going to happen. He was taking time to build up the military while putting on display what China really is like. And I, as, as I keep saying at particular times, uh, once the F-35s are ready to go, uh, that's when, I, I mean, China never fails to complain and boss Americans around. I mean, remember this thing about China demanding that Congress change something? I mean, who do they think? That was a line for me. That was a line for me. Uh, most things I've not, outwardly said what China's doing is wrong. I haven't said it's right or wrong. Most of the stuff with China, I've said, I haven't told you what I think. I, no, I have not told you what I think about any of this or anything else. I haven't told you what I think about Trump other than that it was known he would be elected. There's a lot of stuff in politics. You don't know what I think. I'm only trying to explain to you what I see coming, not what I want to have happen. That's a whole other thing. Though this isn't about what Jesse wants or what Jesse thinks. It's only about what I've told you. Uh, what does Jesse think? Hmm. Well, you know, you, you got to read all my books, all one million words of them to know that. Uh, and even then, I'm not sure if you'll be able to figure it out. Queen Elizabeth was kind of the same way. Uh, she saw things in certain categories. 
um, she, her mission in life was not to tell people what her opinion was, it was to accomplish and achieve good things. Um, Queen Elizabeth's father before her created an absolute mess mixing the church and the state together so he could find some wife to give him a son because someone had convinced him that England couldn't handle a queen. Lo and behold, Elizabeth comes along and reigns as queen for 40 years. So she was trying to bring stability after kind of a, a disaster of a, of a father before her. Um, you know, that the, the marriage between church and state that happened under Queen Elizabeth's father uh, that, that was what the uh, the pilgrims were trying to get away from when they went to America. So, um, no, she didn't say what she really thought. I'm not inclined to tell you what I really, really want. Um, but, uh, I mean, what I want is for the world to get along. But to do that, we've got to be responsible and we've got to know what's coming. So, uh, I'm, I'm telling you this. I have not been outwardly, publicly critical, critical, critical of China bad China, bad China. I haven't been like that, except for China telling Congress what to do. China is not the boss of Congress. Congress answers to the people. They don't answer to anybody else. You don't tell another country's legislature what to do. You might, I mean, if you're rude and stupid, you might tell another country's president what to do, but you do not tell another country's legislature what to do. Uh, the legislature, the an elected legislature answers to the people and China should know that. So all of this that's going on, um, we're seeing it all spin up and develop. As I say, once the F-35s are, are ready, I mean, I think they were pretty much ready, but then we had one go down near Japan and now we figured out that it was a fuel tube. And so now the bit, the, the U S is busy, uh, getting a uh, new fuel tube replacement and supply stuff all set up. Uh, once the F 35 is ready to go, look, China has done an awesome job of complaining, lobbying complaint after complaint, uh, with Washington, meaning that, I mean, they thought they were bossing us and telling us what to do. Ch China doesn't get it. Everything the U S has done to provoke China has just been to get a reaction out of them to see what will make them react. Once the F-35 is ready to go, I mean, we've got all the information we need. We know exactly how to irritate the Chinese into attacking us. And, and thanks to them, thanks to their bossiness, their, 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 their self-importance and self-absorption, they don't know how they come across to other people because they live in a little bubble isolated world cut off from the rest of uh, civilization. So they don't know how they come across to others and they don't care. It's part of their mental situation, whatever that is. So once the F-35 is ready, we know how to hit the button and make, make China come after us. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be conspiratorial here. This is just obvious from history. I don't think there's anything really bad. I mean, I, I, Frank, I mean, we're seeing how bad China is. And if you can't see that we've got to stop them before this gets bigger, um, then I, I think you're not, you're not watching the times enough. Um, but you know, uh, that's all right. I want to think if there was something else I was going to add to all this. <sighs> nope. See you tomorrow.